All right, man, peace. So as everybody knows, there was a big fight that was announced for August 26th of this year. The fight is going to be Floyd Mayweather against Conor McGregor. Uh, the best in mixed martial arts, that being Conor McGregor against a legendary boxer, a legendary fighter, Floyd Mayweather. I won't call him the best in boxing because he is officially retired. And he's been retired for two years now. So, you know, he's, he can't be champion emeritus forever. But Floyd is a legend, and uh, he is a he's he's an even better businessman than he than he was a boxer. All right, just the fact that he's probably going to make upwards of four hundred million to fight somebody who does not on paper belong in the ring with him shows you how brilliant a businessman he is. But anyway, let's see how they cover this story. Obviously, huge news. Um, we've been anticipating this for a while. We predicted on this show that this fight was going to happen this year. Of course, we're correct. We're right about all this stuff. Uh, look, the last time we saw Floyd Mayweather, uh, we were talking about this fight, and he was kind of setting up uh, why he believes that Conor McGregor actually stands a chance in this fight. Here was what Floyd said to us the last time we saw him. Look, I like Conor, but he don't stand an ice cube chance in hell. Saw him. I've been off a couple of years, and I'm 40 years old now, so yeah. I'm a lot older. All right. All right. And... He's, he's still in his 20s. Well, what does that mean, brother? That don't mean shit. That means he's going to be 20 years old and he's going to be a 20-year-old taking an ass whooping. All right. Now, I'm not going to say that he has no chance. Any man with two hands has a chance. It's just how slim it is. And the way that, that Mayweather fights, Mayweather fights in a way that's not conducive to, um, to getting caught. He has... You know, the last time we checked, he has phenomenal re uh, reflexes. He's extremely accurate. He has great hand-eye coordination. And he's always in shape. And he takes everybody seriously. So, I mean, we'll see. I expect him to, to embarrass Conor. But hopefully for him, he's made sure that he's put in the contract that any attempt to use any mixed martial arts moves in the ring will cause you to forfeit your paycheck. So, I mean, that could play a major key. We don't know. And he said he's a heavy hitter. So we'll just see. Does he have a Floyd is so full of it. He said he's a heavy hitter. <laughs> he really trying to sell this fight because he knows that shit's not going to matter. Floyd's been hit by guys uh, that outweighed him by 20 pounds on, on the night of the fight. He sparred with guys who was 175, 180 pounds. Floyd normally fights at, at 147 to 150 in that area. Floyd don't give a shit about that. Van, you're a huge boxing fan. You're a huge fight fan. Tell, what do you think? What are your What are your thoughts right now? I mean, uh, like, it, listen. It, there's an old saying in boxing that there's a, you always have a punch of chance. Anytime yeah. you hit as hard as McCarthy, you got power. You you have a shot to end the fight. The problem with that is, is that Floyd hasn't touched the canvas, man. Floyd is legitimately the best defensive right. fighter we've ever what? seen. We and and let me say this about Floyd Mayweather. And I'm sure that I'll get some uh, disagreement from brothers who, who enjoy boxing and watch boxing. Floyd's skill set is the greatest skill set overall in boxing history. Offense and defense. And I'm sure that there'll be brothers who come in and say, well, what about Sugar Ray Robinson? Sugar Ray Robinson was phenomenal. You know, phenomenal. Right? We know that. If you follow boxing, he was phenomenal. But the era that he fought in was not conducive to what was necessary for us to see how great he really was. I mean, he was a standout because of his phenomenal speed and power and rhythm. And I, I stress the term rhythm because he didn't fight that many great black fighters in his era. For those of you who don't know, Floyd, I mean, uh, pardon me, well, probably Floyd also, but Sugar Ray Robinson was a 33rd degree Mason as well. There's a fight that you can watch with, with Sugar Ray the rematch against Gene Fulmer, where Gene Fulmer had taken his title, I believe, in 1957. And uh, Ray Robinson, uh, he got the title back against Fulmer by knocking him out in the fifth round with a, with a left hook where he was stepping backwards. And after the fight, in the, um, in the ring, while he was being interviewed, he threw up the, uh, the devil horn sign, the so-called uh, Manu Cornuto hand sign. He threw it up to the crowd. <laughs> 
And he used to drink blood before his fights too. To, you know, supposedly to strengthen him. He would have he would have a beef put through a grinder and have all the blood taken out of it and then he would drink it. Yeah. I mean, he used to beat the shit out of his wife too, Sugar Ray Robinson. All right, that guy, he was he was out there. But Floyd Mayweather to me, uh reflexes, hand speed, accuracy, defense, uh both head movement, body movement, and blocking punches, footwork, conditioning, focus, never been matched. Never been matched. And I'm not saying he's the most naturally physically gifted. You know, there's other guys like, you know, Ray Leonard and uh, Roy Jones. Of course, the great Muhammad Ali. But um, Floyd has the whole package. I mean, he's like, you know, he, he just got it all, man. He got it all. People don't understand how great this dude is to the point where his detractors have to talk about how Zab Judah knocked him down because, you know, his glove touched the canvas. That's how great Mayweather is. I can go back to Ali fights and we can see Ali get, get knocked cold, get knocked down, flush against Henry Cooper and Sonny Banks and Joe Frazier, all against the same punch, the left hook, right? Ali did not know how to stop a left hook. He couldn't stop a left hook to save his life. As great and as talented as he was, Mayweather never had any of those problems. And also Mayweather came in in condition in every fight. Ali did not. All right. And I love Ali. Phenomenal, phenomenal fighter. Phenomenal fighter. Unbelievable charisma. Great personality. Showman. But um, the reason why a lot of his fights were so close was because he didn't train as hard as he should have. But let's get back to Floyd. We just heard Floyd in that clip say to us that I'm 40, he's in his 20s, he has a lot of power, he can beat me. So if Floyd thinks he could be beaten by Connor, why shouldn't we all believe that? Floyd wants you to watch this fight. You think I, that's why you're right, 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 but Floyd wants you to watch this fight. Uh, by the way, this is a, it's taking you back in time, this is a fight that kind of blew up right here on TMZ. I mean, let's be honest with it, right? Because this thing didn't start to really gain traction until they started talking trash to each other right. through, through TMZ. Well, no, it started because uh, Conor McGregor was using the Dana White uh, publicity paradigm of talking shit about Floyd Mayweather. It's the same thing that we saw with Ronda Rousey. All right. Uh, Dana White trains his top fighters or he used to train his top fighters to troll Floyd so that they could siphon some of the energy around Floyd to make themselves culturally relevant in uh, sports media. So after a while, Floyd said, you know what? Since they want to call me out, I'm going to call them out. And that's how the fight came into, uh, into fruition. Connor doesn't give a shit. Uh, Connor knows that he's not, it's not like he's going to get in the ring with Floyd and get hit by a punch, a one punch knockout that he doesn't, that's going to change his life and change his career. He knows that worse, he'll probably get, he'll probably get embarrassed and outboxed for six or seven rounds and he might get stopped, you know. Or he might, or he might go the whole distance. If it goes the distance, he's going to claim a Pyrrhic victory, right? A Pyrrhic victory means that when you, you know, in your mind you won, but you took so much damage that um, it's almost not worth it. But in his mind, he'll claim one. Why? Because he's probably going to make over $100 million for this fight. He'll never have to work again if he doesn't want to. And, uh, you know, that's basically that. He basically had nothing to lose. Yeah. Remember the first time that we saw uh, Connor out and we asked him about the Floyd Mayweather situation, this was his reaction. He was very angry. Take a look. Floyd says he's down to do the fight, but Floyd's he... a bitch. I know that. And he's petrified. I understand I that. I flew to Las Vegas and he didn't show his face. As soon as I touched down in Las Vegas, he retired twice. He retired twice. I didn't know that. <laughs> Yo, this dude McGregor, man. <laughs> this dude is hilarious. He said, he retired twice. He's a bitch. <laughs> Yo, this dude McGregor is is, is yo, he's off the chain. I can't wait to see their press conferences. Floyd's a bitch. <laughs> he retired twice. <laughs> How the fuck you retired twice? <laughs> So he was talking some smack, and then of course we went back to Floyd Mayweather and said, "How do you feel about Conor McGregor trashing you like this?" And this, but Conor got his whole swag. He got his whole style from Floyd. Even the glasses he wears, he stole from Floyd. You could tell Floyd is his hero. And this is what Floyd said. We miss it. I'm trying to say that he's a Floyd Mayweather MMA. I mean, I mean, it's okay to just to, to say it, but it's, it's not true. Never compare Conor McGregor to me. It's a total 
disrespectful. I'm an elephant. Elephant don't beef with ants. Yeah, he's an elephant, and Conor McGregor's an ant. I cannot <laughs> wait for these guys to get in the ring and fight each other. I'm very excited. I can't excited wait about for it either. It's going to be. A I don't care about the fight. I care about the press conferences and the build up. You know, that's what's going to be entertaining. Be a spectacle. It's going to be the biggest sporting event I think of this year. Yeah, really by far, think. this this is going to be huge. I cannot wait to see this. And I, I got to be honest with you, I'm I'm with Dana. I think Conor's oh, got, got a shot. Get away. I think he's got a real shot. <laughs> All these dumbass people talking about Conor McGregor has a shot. Yeah, he got an ice cube sh uh, ice cube shot, uh, ice cube chance in hell. That's what he got. All right, so now we're going to check the round table on Speak for Yourself. We're going to check to see how they appraise the McGregor Mayweather or the Mayweather versus McGregor fight. Let's move to the fight world. The long awaited match between Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor is now set for August 26th in Las Vegas. I got to admit, I'm excited. You say men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie, right? Well, numbers can lie too, bro. Numbers can lie too. You can make numbers say a lot of different things. I've never seen an MMA fighter make 300 million in one night. I don't think people understand, like, those two highlights that they showed. Um, those are two future Hall of Fame fighters that Floyd made look silly. That being Pacquiao and, um, and Canelo. Like, he makes world-class fighters look silly. People have no idea how good this dude is, man. Uh, it's because he's a so-called black male with a ruling class mentality. Uh, you know, they use cold words like he's not humble, Right? See, back in the 20s and 30s and 40s, they would say he's an uppity nigger. But now they changed the jargon. They changed the terminology to he's not humble. Right? When you're the best in the world at something, you, you're really not supposed to be humble about it. Right? You can be respectful, but humble, no. Floyd's going to clown him once in the ring. Ooh. Floyd's a bitch and he's petrified. As soon as I touch down in Las Vegas, he retired twice. <laughs> Yo, that line kills me every time, man. <laughs> My fucker say he retired twice. He's so pumped for this fight. He's telling me how he's gonna knock Floyd Mayweather out. Kind of be dressing like an Irish gangster from the 30s, man. Does he have a good chance of upsetting Floyd Mayweather? I can't say, but anything can happen in the sport of boxing. But Floyd's gonna kill Conor McGregor. All right, welcome back. Doug Gottlieb and Jim Jackson are back with us. Let's move to the fight everyone's talking about. Floyd Mayweather versus Conor McGregor, which is now officially set for August 26 in Las Vegas. Just about everyone thinks Floyd is going to take Conor apart. But Dana White went on the herd today and said we shouldn't count out his guy. When Conor McGregor hits people, they react to it immediately. They start wobbling or they go down. He hits hard. Yeah, yeah he does hit hard. But when he's hitting them, you know, them bum ass MMA fighters, when I say bum ass, I'm talking about boxing. All right, those guys are good at about four or five different disciplines. To get to the level that Mayweather's at, you have to be the cream of the crop worldwide in boxing, just with hand skills. Now watch, now watch how Mayweather makes Manny Pacquiao look here. He's gonna faint down. He's gonna body faint down, and uh, draw draw Pacquiao's lead left hand, step back, and then hit him with an overhand right. And the question in this whole thing is, in twelve. See that? That's just that's art right there. In twelve rounds. Can Conor McGregor hit Floyd Mayweather? Look at what he did to, to Canelo. Uh, the man looked like Neo from the Matrix there. Remember we wind that back. Floyd Mayweather. I and the question in this whole thing is, in 12 rounds, can Conor McGregor hit Floyd Mayweather? Look at that shit. That man made a world-class fighter like Canelo look like a complete fool. Floyd Mayweather. I don't know what's going to happen. When these two guys get in there and start punching. I know what's going to happen. Uh, Connor's going to blow his load in about two rounds. Because the conditioning the conditioning uh, base that he has is nowhere near Floyd Mayweather's. Like Floyd Mayweather, I, I saw him on a... Um, this is after the Canelo fight. I saw an interview that he did with uh, Michael Strahan. And what's the other chick name? On the re uh, Kelly Ripper. And he said that when he's in training... He normally, you know, if he doesn't run outside, he gets on a treadmill and he does, he'll either do eight miles at 12.0 on the treadmill or he'll do, um, or he'll do 12 miles at 10.0. I mean, you, you, 
your cardio has to be off the charts to do something like that on a treadmill. I don't know. Nobody knows. So this fight could be horrible or it could be one of the craziest things you've ever seen in your life. That's what makes it intriguing. All right, Calher. Dana can defend Conor all he wants, but Floyd is a massive favorite for a reason. Does he need to knock out Conor to justify the super fight? No, because I think everybody gets what it is. It is a payday. It's a payday. Yeah, it's a money grab. There ain't nothing wrong with that. It's a payday for Dana, McGregor. I mean, listen, Conor McGregor was willing to give up all his advantages. So he's saying, basically, I can't do anything that would give me a fighter's chance. So I'm okay with Conor going down early or, or being dominated. And I think there's transparency here. It's not that you're okay with it. It's that you already know it's going to happen. All right? Conor McGregor Conor McGregor is, is a great societal case study. Because what he does is he establishes a baseline for how people perceive conduct. What I mean by that is this. When people look at Floyd Mayweather, they say, well, he's obnoxious, he's rude, he lacks humility, he talks down to his opponents, right? They say, well, you know, that's why I don't like him. But then a guy like a Conor McGregor will, will say the same, will do the same thing, so utilize the same uh, antics, and people will say, I love Conor, he's great, he's the best. See, a lot of racism, so-called racism, I call it racialism, because it's subconscious. A lot of the things that you perceive about people are based on your subconscious uh, quote unquote bigotry. All right, so that's why that's why you know I I like Floyd. I also like Connor. I see the same things in both. All right, I enjoy them both. I enjoy <laughs> to me Connor is, is a hilarious dude, but he is going to get his ass whooped. All right, but I like to see Connor say the things that he says because it establishes uh, a lot of the hypocrisy in the mainstream media, how they project people. If Connor was a so-called black man utilizing the same tactics that he utilizes, they would be called they, they they would do their best to demonize him, especially in mixed martial arts, which is basically a sport that was created to restore Caucasian masculinity. Right, every time the Caucasian man put on the TV on professional sports, all he saw was a dark skinned face. Basketball and football are seventy five percent black, so called black. Baseball now. You know, they make a big deal about the lack of, of so-called blacks in baseball. It's really just the lack of American blacks. Because with the, um, you know, with the extreme amount of so-called dark Hispanics, whether they be Dominicans or Puerto Ricans or Venezuelans that are in, uh, that are in professional baseball now, I mean, that, that sport is almost 50-50, I, I would think. I would have to check the demographics. One of you brothers can correct me. But I believe that uh, baseball now is almost 50-50 as far as people of color uh, versus Caucasians. So mixed martial arts has a very, very important niche for the Caucasian man's self-image of uh, masculinity and physicality. It's very important. All right, That's hurtful to their racial psyche when they walk into their son's bedroom. And they see that, you know, they see that Billy has a big post of LeBron James on the wall. All right, They walk into their daughter's bedroom. And she has a, a, a big poster of The Weeknd on the wall or a big poster of Chris Brown or somebody like that. All right. A lot of things that, that are done are done to maintain racial identity. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with the, with the so-called Caucasian man wanting his daughter to, um, to look up to a, a Caucasian boy or a Caucasian girl. And same thing with his son. That's how they maintain you know, their bloodline because they are a race of recessive traits. All right, that's genetically pre-coded in them to be fearful because this is a scientific fact. Uh, they are a race of, of, uh, of recessive traits. That's a fact. All right, blue eyes, uh, lack of skin pigmentation, so on and so forth. Those are recessive traits. This is Evil Knievel jumping his motorcycle from that camera to that one with no chance to crash. <laughs> There's no chance for Mayweather to lose. That's not true. When you step in the ring and you have gloves on and your opponent has gloves on, there's always a chance for you to lose. It might just be extremely slim, but you still have a chance. We know Connor similarly is doing it for a paycheck because this is like Steph Curry and LeBron having a basketball event and Steph Curry saying, okay, I'll do it, and I won't even shoot jumpers. 
If you give me 150 million, I'll be humiliated. That's what it feels like to me. Like everybody's acknowledged what it is. I don't have a response to that, really, because yeah, I think it's a good one. Oh, that was a good one. Has there ever been a better businessman, a smarter businessman than Floyd Mayweather? In I already said that, and the answer is no. That's what makes him what he calls himself, TBE. All right, he's totally shifted the paradigm of boxing, which basically is a, is a pimp sport. They take all these fighters, mostly people of color in the last 50 years, and they treat them like absolute hoes. All right, go read about or watch a feature or a documentary on what happened to Ray Robinson at the end of his life, end of his career, Joe Lewis. Right? If it wasn't for the fact that Joe Lewis was a 33rd degree Mason and Frank Sinatra looked out for him and had him making appearances at casinos in Las Vegas, he would have died in, in a ditch somewhere. All right? Same thing with Ray Robinson. He had Hollywood friends. I think Frank Sinatra also looked out for him. All right. Ray Robinson ended up in like a one room apartment somewhere with, with one uh, center table and one of his old boxing trophies on the center table. That's what happens to most of these guys. Floyd Mayweather took the paradigm and totally shifted it because thankfully for him, he ran into a businessman in Al Heyman, uh, a brilliant businessman, a so-called black man named Al Heyman, who, who went to Harvard University, got an, a degree in economy. He is, an, he is an economist, and uh, he understands the money system. That he was able to, to make money off of corporate sponsorships. All right? These are things that a lot of our people don't know anything about. They don't know about all the revenue streams. This is why you have guys like a, uh, a Bob Aram who's able to become so, you know, so wealthy. It's because of ignorance of the people that are being used. That's why I call them hoes. All right. Floyd Mayweather will not allow himself to be used as a hoe. That's why he gets demonized in the mainstream media. Right. The Caucasian Jew media. They're in the world of sports. I mean, think about it. He, he waited out Manny Pacquiao until Pacquiao was past his prime. No, he waited out Manny Pacquiao because Pacquiao didn't want to do the 50 50 split on the blood test. All right. On the drug test. That's what happened. I don't understand. How can you wait somebody out past their prime when you're getting old yourself? Yeah, right. And 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 he, you know, he ducked and dodged not just Pacquiao and everybody he's fought, but how can you duck and dodge everybody when you've fought the most world champions in history? So this guy's a um he's he's your normal uh <laughs> he's your normal Caucasian hater of Floyd Mayweather. And I can't even limit it to Caucasians because even though mo most of them hate or dislike Mayweather, uh, you also have a lot of people of, of various races who dislike Mayweather. Why? Because once again, he's a so-called man of color with a ruling class mentality. You can't duck everybody when you fought the most world champions in the history of boxing. All right. But that's the narrative that gets pushed on him because he controls his career. If he'd have fought the same guys that he's fought in his career and it was Bob Arum that was picking his fights for him, the mainstream Caucasian Jew media would have said that he was greater than Sugar Ray Leonard, greater than Ali. Anybody who was capable of taking him down, and now he takes in a guy out of his normal discipline. I mean, the guy is an absolute genius, and as much as I hate it, I'm going to watch it. I'm fascinated to see it. And but, like, look, it's it's they call it the sweet science for a reason. He's a scientist, whereas, <laughs> quite honestly, Conor McGregor is not. He's an he's an amateur. I mean, like, Danny can say what he wants about when he hits people. They're different sized gloves, right. and and yes, MMA fighters might have tougher jaws, might be tougher physically. Let me tell you something. They could, they could say what they want to say about Mayweather's punching power. You could physically see when he hits those guys, they know that they've been hit. All right? He doesn't have crazy power like a Triple G or back in the day a Marvin Hagler or somebody like that or a, a Terry Norris or Julian Jackson. He don't have power like, you know, make you want to change your career. But <laughs> he got power to make, him, to make a motherfucker say, okay, I can't just walk in on this dude, you know, because I feel that shit. Physically and mentally, because of Bra Bra uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu and just hardcore wrestling. Right. But it's it's different when it's boxing. You're dealing with the best pound-for-pound -pound boxer in his chosen discipline. I don't see how this is. Comp I don't understand how is he the best pound-for-pound -pound boxer? You just said he waits for everybody to get old and he ducked everybody. You see, that's how you know all that shit is just sour grapes. Uh, once again, Floyd Mayweather has fought the most world champions in history. All right, that's what he's done. Now, some now certain brothers might jump in the comments. Oh, well, you know, uh, he picks his fights. That's what you're supposed to do, brothers. 
That's what you're supposed to do. When you get to that level, you should be picking your fights. It, it would be one thing if he's saying, I'm fighting, um, you know, I'm fighting Mo Lowry and Curly off the street. He's fighting champions. When you look at his, at his roster, at the, at the guys that he's fought, every guy that he fought was a champion. Even Berto at one time was a champion. Berto is the only cherry pick that, I, that, that, he's, that he has on his record. Going all the way back, you know, probably up. You know, the last cherry pick before Berto was Sean Bay Mitchell back in 2005. All right? Because Baldemir was world champ. Uh, Zab Judah was supposed to be the fight. Zab Judah was supposed to be the first fight that he had at welterweight. But Zab Judah and him had an issue over the contract. So Zab def- decided to go fight Baldemir and end up getting his ass whooped. Right, but Floyd said, "Fuck it, I'll still fight Zab." So he fought Zab, beat him, and then he fought and beat Baldemir for the belt. And then he goes up and moves up in weight and fights Oscar De La Hoya for the belt. And then comes back down to find a uni- to fight a unification bout with, with Ricky Hatton. Right, then he goes out for a year and change. He comes back and he already knows that he plans on fighting Pacquiao. So he says, "You know what I'm gonna do? Since everybody's talking about how Pacquiao beat De La Hoya and and uh, and Hatton better than I did." I'm gonna beat, I'm gonna beat Marquez, and I'm gonna beat him better than Pacquiao beat him. All that, that all that, that was a, that was a, you know, that was a tactical decision that Marquez fight. So he beat, you know, he beat Marquez, you know, played with him like a little boy, and then he fought Shane Mosley, who was champ when he beat him, and everybody said he was ducking Shane Mosley before the fight, but after he beat him, Shane Mosley was old. Then he goes and he beats Victor Ortiz, who, you know, and this was during the time when everybody said that Mayweather only fights old fighters and he doesn't fight southpaws ortiz was young strong and a southpaw he beat him then he goes and he moves up in weight and he fights Cotto, who was world champ at 154 then he gets locked up then he comes out and he fights uh robert guerrero who was the number one ranked contender at that weight then he goes and he fights uh canelo who was viewed as as a uh, you know the best up-and-coming young fighter in the world and who also was world champion at 154 then he fights, uh, what's my man's name from Argentina? Maidana. He fights him twice after, after Maidana beat the shit out of Adrian Broner. Then he goes and he fights Pacquiao. So, I mean, I don't understand how people can complain. When you look at a guy like a Ray Robinson, the fight decisions that Ray Robinson made back in his time, you couldn't do that today. Like, Ray Robinson would knock a guy out in, in five rounds and then fight him again two weeks later, knock him out in two rounds. And people say, well, Ray Robinson was 128 and 1 and 2. Like, of course he is. He's fighting the same guys over and over again. I'm not saying the brother wasn't great. He was, he, was, he was unbelievable. But he fought in six ounce gloves. And he was fighting the same guys over and over again. Like, come on. You couldn't do that shit today. So, you know, it is what it is. Well, especially if you go on 12 rounds. From a boxing perspective... Floyd doesn't have the power like that. You, we talked about the right. Victor Cruz, but it, you really got to go back to Ricky Hatton in 2007. You mean Victor Ortiz, not Victor Cruz. The seven when he had a legitimate knockout. But what Floyd is going to do is frustrate you. My thing is, does Connor come into the fight and muck it up and make it real uncomfortable for Floyd to really get in there? Because we know that Connor is not your typical boxer. So he's going to do something different inside the ring to try to frustrate who's a professional, Floyd. That's the only way you're going to be able to get to him. Think about it. The only person that has something to lose here is Floyd. That's it. Conor McGregor has nothing to lose. He can go back to MMA when this thing is done. If Floyd doesn't look good, if he gets punched, if something happens, it's back on Floyd. It's nothing to do with uh, Conor McGregor as far as tarnishing his image. I, I, uh, I partially, no, that, that's partially true. But you have to understand something. They're, they're not fighting for a belt. Floyd's money's already guaranteed. If he gets tagged once or twice by Connor, I mean, the money's already in the bank. He's he's gonna be four hundred million dollars richer regardless. All right, so I mean, they really neither one really have anything to lose. They both really have pretty much all the game. I, I'm gonna throw just a slight curveball. And I apologize up front for doing this, Colin. But could we even have this fight if both fighters were black? I mean, honestly, because that's the that seems to be the hook here because. No one rationally thinks this is going to be competitive. To me, the only hook here is what boxing was doing 120 years ago and all the way through the history of boxing is the black-white narrative. I don't see any other hook here because it's not going to be much of a fight. Well, the real hook here, the racist part of it, but the hook also is that McGregor, 
uh, is as charismatic as Floyd is. And I think that Floyd is a fan of McGregor. I think McGregor is a fan of Floyd under, underneath all the bluster. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't shock me to see them become very, 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 very cool with each other after the fight. It's the Great White Hype Part 2. I mean, that was, it was a funny movie where you had the... the no, it's not the Great White Hype. It's, you know, it's, it's really the Great White... You know, it's really the Great Dopes. The, the Dopes being the people who are going to pay for this fight. All right? That's really what it is. It's not the Great White Hype. But the Great White Hype would be if they had built up a white boxer... You know, who was like 40 and 0 and fought 40 bums. That's, that's how you hype a guy. You don't hype a guy who's 0 and 0. The, the Irishman, they made him into this Irish star who had, who had you know, famously knocked out the champ in amateurs. And that's, yeah. that's what this, yeah, the playing off the black and the white, I think, is. And, I mean, the Conor McGregor story is kind of amazing, right? I, I, Darren Ravel tweeted out that, that four years ago he was collecting welfare and now he's going to make $100 million. The winner of this is UFC. For a boxing match to be interesting, they had to go to their rival. This is like the AFL NFL Mergel. Uh no, that's not true. I mean, really for this fight to be interesting, all that had to happen was that McGregor had to be as great a salesman as Floyd. Right? There's five or six different mega fights that Floyd could make in boxing if he if he wanted to keep fighting boxers. Floyd doesn't want to really have to fight those guys anymore. He wants to be retired, but he loves to make money. So he sees an option with Conor McGregor. All right? And he took it. He's a businessman. Well, you think this is a good look for the UFC? I think Joe Namath was a lot more interesting than the NFL quarterbacks. I think Connor's a lot more interesting than all the boxers. And boxing went, okay, this is the best. This is boxing. Boxing had nothing to do with it. You know, he's thinking about boxing like it has a commission, like another sport. Boxing is not. <laughs> boxing is, is not an entity. Right. Boxing is like a feudal state. You no, know, it's a series of feudal states like in J ancient Japan, you know, like you, you, or or, uh, or Greece with the city states. It's all separate but together. You have a bunch of sanctioning bodies. Really, whatever pays, they're going to give the green light to. That's why they're giving the green light to this fight, because they're going to get a major kickback. Vegas is going to get a major kickback. This really didn't have anything to do with boxing. This has to do with entertainment. This is more of a spectacle. Boxing or this Floyd saying, I can, Floyd to me is saying, look, the American public is a bunch of suckers. Exactly. You see, that's why I, I just said it. All right. When the, when the dude in the corner said this is a great white hype. No, it's not. It's about the great dopes. All right. It's about the American public. All right. They already, they already buttered up Conor McGregor on the American public and have people thinking that he's unbeatable. He's already been talking shit about Floyd. Floyd said, no problem. Right. This this is like a ready made package for me. This is perfect. It's similar to it's similar to the Rocky story, kinda. All right. Well, Apollo Creed was also a great businessman. And uh he was able to monetize that whole storyline. But that's all it is. It's just it's just Floyd understanding the idiocy of, of the average American. And I can make three hundred million dollars for virtually no work because type of boxing match that they will accept this farce. Well, I think America, again, when George Clooney did Batman, he didn't apologize. We all understood. He wanted to get his movies made. I'll be Batman. Steve Buscemi, Armageddon, says later, I just wanted a bigger house. We've People, everybody in this room has done something, a speech, a camp for a dollar. Now make it a hundred million. I think we all know going in what it is. Uh, well, George Clooney almost ruined the Batman franchise. Thankfully, <laughs> Chris, Christopher Nolan saved it, okay? But but look, look, I, I think it's not just black-white. At its core, here's why I think the American public like the Irishman. And, and it's very simple. We like the idea when you get in a schoolyard fight of, hey, because we used to, everybody used to fight at Jordan Elementary at the ditch, okay? But if you fought a kid at another school, you're going to come to my school and fight? You know, your, I'll go to your school. I'll fight with your rules. It doesn't really matter. And that's really the UFC mantra. That's really Conor McGregor's mantra. I mean, when he lost, uh, he's lost out of weight class, you know, because because his opponent wasn't ready. I mean, so so like here's a guy who what he well no he has three losses he had, he lost one fight like that, all right. But Conor is a beast in his sport. There's no doubt about that. What he's gonna say is, I will fight anybody, anywhere, any rules. I, I'm the ultimate warrior. We know he's going to get destroyed, but I agree with you, Jason. He loses nothing, but this is just Floyd, who might have something to lose, but the truth is he's played us all. He's done it before. He'll probably do it again. He'll probably somehow get Pacquiao to fight him again and get a couple more hundred million dollars. Isn't it all entertainment? Isn't that what we're looking at here? In mid-August, nothing is going on. Here's the entertainment 
That's why it's perfect. August is one of the dead months in sports. You have no basketball. Baseball's in the middle of his long ass of his long ass season, and football doesn't start for another two weeks. It's perfect. Aspect of it: two guys at the pre-fight hype, all the press conferences, the tours to get it done are going to be off the charts. They're going to be talking so much stuff that it's going to make you want to do something in August, which is watch the fight. And at the end of it, listen, huh. nobody's getting robbed individually. People are like, oh, they'll make a hundred million. There's 308 million people in America. You all chip in a nickel. <laughs> like nobody's getting robbed here. Gottlieb gets it. I call him, dude, can I come over? Yeah, seven guys in a room. We all pay $9. Here's the other part it's about... entertaining. Here's the other part about how they get it, and Colin has said this for years, and baseball does not. Notice they put it in August. They're not putting it up against the NFL. Okay. No way. They put... Exactly. is what I'm just saying. They're putting it before the NFL. Kind of salivates us for the NFL season, as opposed to baseball, who's stuck with it. We're going to do October, October, October. And look, the Cubs were obviously great last year, and people watched. But if they really wanted to cash in, they would have their playoffs in August as well. Guaranteed, this will be my prediction. Floyd will embarrass him, and part two, they'll change the rules and make it more MA, MMA style, and we'll all do it again. And I watch... Nah, Floyd is not doing that, bro. So that's, <laughs> that's definitely not going to happen. Floyd ain't getting in the ring where nobody's going to be throwing kicks and knees at his damn ribs. That's not going to happen. I watched both. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up. The Seahawks. But anyway, yeah. I, I've gotten a lot of brothers asking me or requesting that I speak about the Mayweather-McGregor thing. I was really going to wait until their first press conference, but I was getting so many requests. I said, okay, I'll just, I'll just find whatever segments I can and make a... An initial video. I'll probably do something again once they have their first press conference. But yeah, brothers. All right, peace.